Lindell TV is pleased to present the Sentinel Report with your host, Alex Newman. Alex has written for a wide array of publications in the United States and abroad. He currently serves as a contributor to Epoch Times and foreign correspondent and senior editor for the New American Magazine. Alex is the author of several books and has been a guest on countless radio and television programs and is a much sought after conference speaker. Alex is best known for his reporting and research that has exposed the dangers and agenda of globalism. As the father of five children, Alex is working to defend faith, family, and freedoms from the hostile philosophies and ideas that are contrary to the Bible and the United States Constitution. And now, here is your host, Alex Newman. Welcome, everybody, to the Sentinel Report. I'm your host, Alex Newman. Thank you so much for joining us today on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Uh, we've got a very special guest for you coming up, uh, a, an expert uh, with a lot of experience right at the intersection of faith and politics. I uh, served for uh, almost two decades in the state legislature of Pennsylvania. He's also the founder of the American Pastors Network, a man of God who loves the Lord and tries to apply the Bible to all areas of life. I think you're really going to be blessed by hearing from him. We also have a brief news segment. We'll cut it short so we can spend as much time as possible with our guests. But we'll start today, like we do every day, with a verse from the Word of God. This comes out of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. It's almost a cliche, and yet we today live in a nation where uh, the television presenters and the politicians uh, and many of our government leaders uh, are openly and flagrantly calling evil good and good evil. Uh, the, this will not end well, I can assure you. Um, also, before we get to news, folks, I want to remind you, if you go to preparewithsentinel.com, preparewithsentinel.com, you'll get some incredible deals, $200 off every three-month emergency food kit, plus $200 of free gear, including amazing things, a radio uh, powered by the sun or a hand crank, uh, a folding stove, uh, water filter, all kinds of great stuff. And it's all free when you get a three-month emergency preparedness kit. And folks, uh, the food crisis is not coming. It's already here. Uh, I shared with you last week, uh, the UK is already dealing with food shortages. They're already rationing uh, uh, vegetables and fruits. We've got the, the calls for war growing ever louder in Ukraine, which is, of course, uh, one of the bread baskets of the world, very likely that things will continue to deteriorate. And so go to preparewithsentinel.com, support the show, and get yourself a whole bunch of great stuff at great prices. And folks, this is the company that I use for my own family. That's why uh, we partnered with them for this show. Some of the free stuff you'll get, uh, just one more reminder, you get waterproof matches, you get an emergency blanket, emergency folding stove, a five-piece stainless steel mess kit, and so much more all for free when you buy a three-month emergency food kit. All right, folks, uh, our first news item of the day. Turns out, according to Rasmussen polling, the overwhelming supermajority of Americans want all videos from January 6, 2021, the mostly peaceful protest at the Capitol, released to the public. Uh, a majority also believe, folks, that government agents helped provoke the riot. Again, this is from the latest Rasmussen survey. They found that 58 percent of Americans think it's very important that the public be allowed to view these videos. Only 17 percent don't think it's important. A stunning 80 percent believe it is important for the public to see this. And again, a strong majority think that government agents were involved. And of course, they were. Uh, you probably noticed that yesterday, Tucker Carlson dropped a nuclear bomb on the fake narrative surrounding January 6th. Of course, we've been telling you this from the very beginning right here on this program. In fact, we've even shown a lot of the footage proving that police officers invited the protesters into the Capitol. Police officers took them on a tour of the Capitol. Uh, obviously, they didn't seem very concerned about crimes being committed since they're escorting them around the building, right? Normally, if you're a police officer and you see a crime, you arrest the individual perpetrating the crime. Uh, I want to show you just one little clip uh, from what Tucker dropped. Unfortunately, only Tucker Carlson was able to get the footage. Uh, Mike Lindell is suing to try to get everybody access to the footage. But I want to show you a little clip from uh, what Tucker shared yesterday. You can see for yourself how dishonest the politicians have been. Jacob Chansley became the face of January 6th a dangerous conspiracy theorist dressed in outlandish costume who led the violent insurrection to overthrow American democracy. For these crimes, Chansley was sentenced to nearly four years in prison, far more time than many violent criminals now receive. What did Jacob Chansley do to receive this punishment? 
To this day, there is dispute over how Chansley got into the Capitol building. But according to our review of the internal surveillance video, it is very clear what happened once he got inside. Virtually every moment of his time inside the Capitol was caught on tape. The tapes show that Capitol Police never stopped Jacob Chansley. They helped him. They acted as his tour guides. Here's video of Chansley in the Senate chamber. Capitol Police officers take him to multiple entrances and even try to open locked doors for him. We counted at least nine officers who were within touching distance of unarmed Jacob Chansley. Not one of them even tried to slow him down. Chansley understood that Capitol Police right, were his allies. All righty, folks. Does that look like a violent insurrection? No, of course it doesn't, because that's not what happened. The government is lying to you. It's just that simple. It's another psychological operation designed to undermine the opposition to what is happening in Washington, D.C. It's plain and simple, exactly as we've been telling you from the beginning. Folks, they lie and they lie and they lie. Um, interesting news out of Europe. Um, actually, first, uh, all 10 of the top states with the lowest annual average unemployment rates last year were Republican governor led. All 10 states with the highest annual average unemployment rate had Democrat governors. That's all according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that was released last week. Uh, in Europe, there's an interesting dispute emerging between uh, different factions within the Catholic Church. Uh, Cardinal Mueller, very prominent uh, conservative-leaning uh, Catholic cleric, uh, had some really harsh words for the Conference of German Bishops, and especially its leader, as they seek to normalize homosexuality, gender confusion, transhumanism. Um, this cardinal actually referred to them as a sect or a cult. Uh, the cardinal said this emerging German sect is diametrically opposed to the Catholic faith. It will cause Christianity in Germany to evaporate. Millions are leaving the church in Germany. He said the remaining Catholics will become de-Christianized, and the whole whole establishment of German Catholic ecclesiology is false and suicidal. But folks, these are really, really strong comments from coming from a Catholic cleric. Uh, he says, do not make freedom a pretext for fornication, impurity, lust, idolatry. He says the homosexual and gender ideologies which contradict every scientific, philosophical, and theological anthropology have replaced the hermeneutics of the Catholic faith in being different Catholicism of the German synodal sect. Amazing. Uh, very strong language, folks, and I suspect we're going to see this rift continue to grow within the Catholic Church. Uh, coming closer to home, we have um, the world's greatest tennis player, Novak Jovic, also probably one of the healthiest people on planet Earth, is not allowed to come to America because Joe Biden says he needs to get his COVID vaccine. Yeah. You have to see it to believe it. Uh, also, those 15-minute cities, folks, that we've been warning you about, they're already coming to Europe. Now they're coming to Florida. I want to show you just a little clip from a local news segment here in my beautiful state. Check it out. If from where you shop to where you work, all within a 15-minute walk. Sounds pretty nice, right? Cities around the country are already doing it. NBC2 meteorologist Lauren Hope finds out if during Ian recovery, it could be a reality here in southwest Florida. All right, you can cut here. South. Yeah, folks, it's coming. We told you it was coming, and it's even in the free state of Florida. Mm, not good. Uh, other Florida news, the Florida Department of State just announced they're going to be dropping out of ERIC, which we've exposed here on this program, the Electronic Registration Information Center. This is a big win for Floridians, folks. Uh, Secretary of State Cord Bird notified ERIC that Florida would be terminating its membership. Other states have also done this recently, including Missouri and West Virginia. Uh, this seems really like a uh, partisan uh, operation to find out who's voting and where so that they can get more ballots. But uh, hey, we'll see. Fake office, as we reported last uh, week in Washington, D.C. They've got an address. There's nobody there. It's a rental office. Uh, also uh, in um, Congress, you've got a bipartisan bill now to ban TikTok. Uh, Senator Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia, and Senator John Thune, Republican of South Dakota, have uh, outlined a method to ban foreign technology, and obviously this is aimed at TikTok. Uh, it looks like the Biden administration is considering whether to support this legislation once it gets introduced. Uh, Senator Josh Hawley introduced uh, the No TikTok on United States Devices Act that would have prohibited this communist Chinese app from being downloaded on U.S. government devices. 
Uh, and last but not least, folks, over in Tennessee, the governor, Bill Lee, just signed a bill last week that would protect children under the age of 18 from having their genitals mutilated or from being put on puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones under the guise of transgenderism. Uh, thank you to the governor of Tennessee for taking action to protect children. We'll be right back, folks, with Sam Rohrer from the American Pastors Network. Stay tuned. Most churches are silent about today's intense culture wars, leaving Christians alone and ill-equipped to stand in the battleground of ideas raging against us. That's why GTI Ministries has created a special bundle of new teaching tools to keep your family, friends, and church from being taken captive by a world at war with our God. We have reformatted our popular You Are What You Think textbook series to synchronize with our Thinking Like a Christian video series, enabling anyone to easily lead others through this life-changing curriculum. Our special bundle also includes new instructor guides for assisting the leader moment by moment and which also contain discussion questions with answer keys. Go to gtimin.com and click the green banner at the top to receive your special bundle containing all these resources for only $119 for the DVD format or $99 for the streamed or thumb drive style. Take a stand for family and faith. Go to GT. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to bring you my Giza Dream bed sheets for the best offer ever. We're all experiencing rising prices, but I was able to secure a limited amount of Giza cotton for a great price, and I'm passing those savings directly on to you. You can get my Giza Dream bed sheets for as low as $29.98 with your promo code. They're the most luxurious sheets ever, made with the world's best cotton. It's grown only in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. I know my sheets are perfect for you, and I'm extending my 60-day money-back guarantee for Christmas until March 1st, 2023, making them the perfect gifts for your friends, your family, and everyone you know. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to save 50% on my Giza Dream bed sheets. That's as low as $29.98. Quantities are extremely limited at these amazing prices, so please order now. The Homegrown Generation Family Expo is back. The Homegrown Generation Family Expo is a live and fully interactive online conference coming March 6th through 9th. The conference will feature many of today's most popular speakers addressing the most important issues that homeschool families face, and every session will give you the opportunity to have your questions answered. Registration is now open at homegrowngeneration.com. Use the coupon code NEWMAN to save $10 on registration today. It'll be four days of nonstop encouragement and fun that you can enjoy from the comfort of your home. Registration includes lifetime access to every session. Mark your calendars for March 6th through 9th and visit homegrowngeneration.com to register today. Welcome back to the Sentinel Report, folks. Our guest today is Sam Rohrer. He is the founder and president of the American Pastors Network. He is a former businessman, former state legislator. He served from 1992 to 2010 in the Pennsylvania State House. Um, he, uh, while there, was dubbed the conscience of the House by the media because of his consistency in upholding moral and constitutional principles. Uh, while in office, he fought for parental rights, especially in education. Um, he founded the American Pastors Network in 2013. They've now got chapters across the country in at least eight states. Um, he also hosts three national programs, Stand in the Gap Today, which is a, a, our daily news analysis program. It's carried on nearly 550 radio stations. He does Stand in the Gap Weekend, a one-hour weekly program heard on over 800 stations, and then also Stand in the Gap Minute, a daily one-minute feature carried on nearly 700 stations. Uh, he also hosts a TV program called Stand in the Gap TV. Uh, he just does so much. I don't know how he finds the time for it all. He actually has uh, six children, 16 grandchildren, one more on the way. They homeschooled their children for over 25 years and are very active in their church. Sam, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's it's really an honor to have you. Uh, I want to start with, with a question that is, I think, becoming more relevant than ever. We hear so many politicians and even some pastors say that, you know, the church needs to stay in the church building and the Bible needs to stay in the church building. Government government needs to be secular. We have a wall of separation between church and state. Uh, how do you see this issue? Does the Bible have a place in government? Yeah, well, it absolutely does. Government is God's idea, as you know, Alex. And that's one of the odd things about it in the, this strange last couple of generations. Our founders had no problem with it. Uh, they knew they could not even develop a government 
a, a, a self-governing government under God, a representative government. I'm from Pennsylvania. William Penn was here. It was his concept of a holy experiment in freedom, which is what he called it. And, uh, and, and so they knew. They knew. And they went back and they looked and said, what's worked in history? What's the Bible say? What's God say are the promises for a blessed nation? And they put them into place. So there is no just government without God. Simple as that. Why? Because government is God's idea. Government simply means authority. God is premier authority. He is all truth. He is all authority. Romans 13, the scripture, God lays it out. All authority is ordained by God. Well, what is all authority? Well, it's government, civil government, but it's the individual, self-government. It's the parents in the home, family government. It's the employer in the workplace. It is the church and church leadership. These are all God's design. The problem is when people decide they can make their decisions, that parents can make a determination for their family without God, or that civil government, those in office, can make decisions about the law or about justice or punishment or any of that type of thing without God, or that the church, of all things, can make decisions, which much of the church around the world today is, Christian church even, have become her heretical. They're trying to make the determinations on their own by not considering what God says to do in the scripture. So fundamentally, long answer to a short question. There is no just authority at any level without God. God is the designer. He sets the expectations. He also will hold all people accountable for what they do. And that is a principle I know from being in office for 20 years was very real to me. I knew that when I took an oath of office, Alex, that I became obligated to the to the uh, citizen. And my obligation was to make sure that I upheld with fidelity the Constitution of uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and of the United States. OK, but my first but I did it before God. My first obligation was to the moral law of God. My second obligation was to the people. And that was the oath. Well, when those things are done, then things work out. I'll finish with this. I knew what the Bible says. One day, all people in positions of authority will give an account to God for what they have done in their positions of authority. Moms and dads will do that. Employers will do that. Pol politicians, they will do that. Pastors and elders, they will do that. And frankly, every person in a position of authority will have and have a higher duty for what they are to do because they're making decisions that affect other people. So for me, it was not it was easy to be in government because I knew what my priorities were, but it without God, government becomes tyranny and what we're seeing today. You cannot have just government without God. Amen. And actually, the uh, the first governor of your great state was reported to have said that, um, you know, if you don't want to be governed by God, you're going to be governed by tyrants. And uh, it's, uh, it's so true. Uh, Sam, I want to ask you, um, you know, what, in your view, are the most important issues facing our country? And I know there's a lot of them. Right? We've got the abortion, the transgenderism, the e economic stuff, the wars, I mean, all of it. But what do you think are the, are the top issues that are facing our country and, and what should be done about them? Uh, I think there are two. I think we have uh, reams of symptoms of what you're just talking about. But our core problem is that we've forgotten God. Um, we have two sins that God is placing judgment on our nation for doing in the same way that he told Israel. Two primary sins. We have shed innocent blood. We've killed millions of our own babies. At just that alone. Other ways to shed innocent blood, but that is one major one. And the second one is um, that we we hold to other gods. We have forgotten God. Idolatry. God's judgment against nations all through history was for pride, arrogancy of those in position of, of power. God said, "I." He resists the proud. That's why He took down Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar and and others. That's why He dealt with Israel. But there were two sins that were the worst, shedding of innocent blood 
and idolatry. Well, that's our problem in America. We've taken truth, which is God. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We've taken the truth, Jesus, come from God, the, as encapsulated within his written word, and we've set it aside. And so it doesn't fit for today. It doesn't work any longer. We will not be governed by the word of God, the Bible. Matter of fact, as a culture, we're saying that those who actually hold tenaciously to that culture says, you don't even have a place today any longer in our society. Um, that is our problem at the root. If we come back to understanding truth, that that is God, the author of truth, Jesus Christ, to whom all authority has been given, and who we will all stand before and bow one day, bow the knee, if we understood those things again, Alex, the symptoms of which there are many and growing by the day would be fixed. But we will not and cannot fix them with any amount of money, any amount of legislation, any amount of creative policy. We cannot fix any of those things until we fix our relationship to the God of heaven through recognizing that he is the truth. Sam, I've, I've asked a lot of people that question, and I have to say, I think that was the best answer I've ever gotten, because all the other issues, I believe, uh, go back to those two, at least the vast majority of them. And, and what came to mind as you were talking, um, you probably didn't watch it. I didn't either. But uh, during the 2020 Golden Globe Awards, uh, I think she's an actress, uh, Michelle Williams, actually gave thanks that she was able to have an abortion because that enabled her to pursue her little golden statue. I'm thinking, man, if that's not all of this wrapped into one, right? We're shedding innocent blood in sacrifice and service to this idol, this little golden statue that symbolizes, I guess, success or, or movie or whatever. Uh, just nail on the head, Sam. So uh, what would be your advice then to Americans, to the political class, to the pastors uh, for how we get back to that? And, and a second question on that note, um, is it too late? Have, have we gone too far? Have we crossed the line and, and there's no turning back now? Well, I'll go with the last one first. As long as we're in a position where we have an ability to talk like we are right now, there is still hope. However, when I look at America and I look at Israel, as the pattern in scripture, God dealt with Israel, the pattern, uh, and I look at us, I would say without a doubt that America has been more arrogant as idolatrous. We've killed more babies than Israel sacrificed to Moloch or Baal. Um, how can God be just God and not bring judgment against America when he brought judgment against Sodom and Gomorrah and Israel, his own chosen people and nation, he brought them into bondage to enemies because they walked away from God. So I'm saying we are way down the road, Alex. And I, and I can point to probably more scripture that would say that where we are right now, from, from finances to immorality, to the collapse of our justice system, to lawlessness in the streets, to... Uh, politicians and those in office given to bribery and corruption, to apostasy in the church. All of these things are evidences of a nation that have walked away from God. So what do we do? Well, I'll tell you what, what starts. It starts with those who know the truth. I call them biblically, it's the remnant, those who say, I have a fear of God and I, to the best of my ability, am fulfilling his commandments. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, fear God and keep his commandments. If those, if those who believe that, I think the key starts with them. They're the remnant. The remnant's always led the way back to revival in any nation, but it starts with those who know the truth. Now, it must go beyond that. I think all of those in positions of authority. I mean, I pray for the pastors of the pulpits of America. 70%, according to George Barna's surveys, don't even believe the Bible is authoritative. So we got a real problem starting in the pulpit. But we have guys who are in office. I was there. I know how many are there. There's very few who actually truly believe and understand that they are ministers of God. Deacons in the Hebrew or in the Greek, deacons of God, Romans 13, and that they are, first of all, responsible to him. They don't even know, I have found from my experience, those in office as ministers of God, they don't even know what God expects. They don't even know what the purpose for government is. So how are they going to do that? Well, we need to work in the heart of people. Holy Spirit, deliverer of the truth, the one who brings conviction. Um, 
for me. I'm saying we try to point everyone we can to in our program. Pursue the truth, we say. Pursue the truth. Any person who says, I want to know the truth, the Bible says in Proverbs, they will find the truth. God will deliver the truth to that person through the work of the Holy Spirit, which is the deliverer of truth. That is what we need. We need people to say, I am sick and tired of the way we are. I want to know the truth. When that happens, they will find the truth, and we can point them to the God of heaven, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. 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 Um, we're down to just a couple minutes left, Sam. And before we run out of time, I want to make sure that you can share with the folks the best way to listen to your wonderful radio program. I've been blessed to be on there a couple times. We talked about the the uh, emergence of this kind of one world spiritual movement, the new Ten Commandments. Uh, what's the best way uh, for people to follow all the incredible work that you're doing, your radio programs, your TV programs? And if you're on social media, please give those out as well. Well, I can. I think the very best way to encourage people listening in this f- format is to download our app, our free app on their phones, on their iPhone or their whatever, their Android, Stand in the Gap. That's what's on the screen behind me. Just put in the phrase, Stand in the Gap. That'll download the app, all of the radio, all of the TV, all of the ability to interact, partner with us in prayer and finances and all of that kind of stuff is all found right there. That would probably be the easiest way, Stand in the Gap on the app. Or they can go to our uh, website at standinthegapradio.com. Either either place would be just fine. I would encourage people to do that. And we tried to take the headline news of the day from a biblical and constitutional perspective. That's what people need. That's what you're trying to do. And so glad to be on with you today. Uh, Sam, I appreciate it so much. Uh, brilliant. And folks, I can't recommend highly enough. Go get the app. Go listen to the program. Uh, he's got amazing guests talking about the critical issues of the day without fear, without favor. Uh, Sam, we still have about a minute left. Uh, real quick, your mm-hmm. thoughts on what's happening at Asbury College. Um, you know, There's a lot of talk about the possibility of revival in America. Uh, have you looked at that? And do you have any quick thoughts on that? I have. And I have looked at it. And this is what I am saying. The God is free to work in the hearts of people wherever he is. Right now, most of the leadership is not coming from the pulpits of America. So can God go directly to the hearts of individuals? Yes. I like what I saw. It seemed to be spontaneous. There was a lot of repentance and confession. I tell people, pray into that which appears to be of God. Now, the truth remains, and time will tell whether or not that was a momentary event or something that actually has permanently changed the lives of students there and spreading across the country. I pray that it does. I am not going to pray against it. I am not going to say that absolutely is of God. Time will tell, but I like what I see. Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we'll get you back very soon. Thanks, Alex. All right, folks, that was Sam Rohrer, founder of the American Pastors Network, a true statesman, a man of God. I hope you'll go check out his program. I want to thank you all for tuning in. It's always such an honor and a pleasure to spend this brief time with you every weekday. We are all out of time. If you're watching us live, Roger Stone's going to be up next. We've got a whole lot more for you tomorrow, so stick around. Thanks again. Until next time, God bless you all. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new pro-